I'm Jeff Murphy from Boston University Alumni Relations, and I'm your host for an interview series showcasing the career paths of our most interesting and accomplished alumni. Welcome to the Proud to Be You podcast. Today's guest is accomplished actor Russell Hornsby. Russell's a graduate of the College of Fine Arts from 1996. His career spans across theater, television, and film. You'll likely recognize him from his best-known performances, including Lincoln Heights, Grimm, Seven Seconds, and Fences. He sat down with me to explore his journey beyond ComAv, the pivotal moments of his career, and his most recent role in the critically acclaimed film, The Hate You Give. Well, Russell, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for coming back to campus. How long has it been since you've been to BU? Do you get here frequently or not so much? Two years. Wow, okay. Two years ago this fall, I was here. The last time I was promoting another film of mine, I was I came to BU. And that time I was um, able to have a sort of a master class with some of the acting students. Great. Which was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're psyched to have you back on campus. We're really happy to be here in the WTBU studios. Thank you to uh, Hannah, our engineer, and some other folks. Um, you're currently living in Los Angeles? Technically, currently okay. uh, living in Chicago. Living in Chicago, yes. okay, great. Living, yeah, in the go in the windy city. But I think I read uh, you grew up in the California Bay Area. Yes, grew up in uh, Oakland, California. So, can you tell us a little bit, as a California guy, how did you find yourself making the trip all the way to Boston for your college experience? You know, when I was when I was in uh, in high school, I didn't study acting. I just did some plays on the side as a hobby, and. You know, when when they started to ask you that fateful question of what do you want to study when you go to college, I had no clue. And a bunch of my friends, in their infinite wisdom, said, you should be an actor. Like, that's easy. They don't do anything. And, you know, of course, you want to get away with doing as little as possible <laughs> in school. <laughs> and so, you know, bing, the light goes on. And um, I auditioned for um, BU, among other schools. Got into BU, and I realized that... Boston was the furthest point, like, from one end to the other. And I said, I want to get as far away from home as I can possibly go. And so that was Boston on uh, on top of the fact that I had family here as well. So acting, the arts, not a big part of family life growing up? Really was just high school and something you found as a hobby? Or did you always have an inkling that it was, you know, you're passionate about the arts and you know, performing and things? When I think back on it, my mother, t my mother was a... Um, a public health nurse worked at high school and so she would be supporting her students and you know friday or saturday night we'd have to go to the play you know to the school play and so of course she has to bring her kids and you know i'm like second third fourth grade you know on up going to these high school plays and not really feeling understanding what the impact it's having at that time yeah. it's only in retrospect you sort of see it but i grew up as you know primarily an athlete and um, theater sort of started on as a dare, you know, from a friend, you know, and sort of get some extracurricular activity, an extra grade, and to see some girls. So that was it. And so um, my motivations were pure. <laughs> <laughs> but then at some point, did it, at what point did it turn into, I could do this as a career? Was it when you were at BU before you got here? You know, while I was, after I graduated, really, you right. know, you're just, I, again, I'm doing it. As going, you know, be an opportunity to go to college, basically, quite honestly. I didn't really um, look at it as, as my life's pursuit. It was really like, let me get out of Oakland. Let me say I'm going to college, really. And my mother said, you know, you can go. It's great. Follow your dream, but you can't quit. And so I had that in the back of my mind constantly. Like, I wanted to leave after my freshman year. I wanted to leave after my sophomore year. But I knew that, you know, I can't quit. And, you know, and of course, my mother will say now, oh, I, I wasn't serious, you know, but she was. And that just wasn't in my mind's eye. So I had to stay, stick it out. And then once I get to my junior year, things start to open up, opportunities change. And and then I when I left and I got to New York and I realized of course, I could have learned. I couldn't do anything else, really. All right. Well, before we talk about New York, I, I want to ask a couple things about your BU experience. Yes. First, just as a student, um, I wonder if driving down Com Ave today sparked some memories for you. I'm curious to know where you lived on campus, if there were places that you hung out, if I were to find you uh, in your regular study spot. Where was that? Tell us about your days at, at BU. Well, so I, I sleep uh, Claflin Hall, 
was the freshman year, then sleeper, and junior year was in Miles Standish, and uh, senior year was uh, South South Campus, uh, thirty Buswell, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and so I was nostalgic. This this bunch of nostalgia just sort of just wafts over me whenever I drive up and down Com Ave. Um, you know, hung out in SFA and in front. You know, it like it sort of reminded I, you guys are too old. I'm dating myself, but like the beginning of like fame, where like they're all in front of the school, like I know dancing fame. and We're about yeah, the same age, so. dancing and singing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like sort of felt like that, like just getting their creative, um, spontaneous creativity out of their system. You know, and um, but you know, we, when I was in college, you know, we didn't have any money, so. You just you hung out in people's apartments, yeah. you know, all the time, <laughs> sure. and whoever could get the beer, and that was pretty much it, you know. Well, you and, talked about CFA, SFA at the time, now CFA being such a, a crucial part of your experience. I'd like to hear more about your academic experience at the College of Fine Arts. If you could tell me about, you know, were there particular classes or productions you were involved in that really stood out? Are there were there mentors you had here at the time, professors that you still remember to this day? Yeah, I mean, you know, classes, again, when I talk about really getting in touch with who I was or who I am, that was through theater. You know, you, you have, you know, growing up in Oakland and, and, you know, being, you know, being black growing up and having this uh, bravado, you know, growing up at the time of hip hop and rap music and whatnot. And so you have this bravado where you're there sticking your chest out. And so I was able to find through... um Acting exercises, improvisational exercises with with John Lipsky, um, you know, vocal exercises with Robert Chaplin. Get in touch with my real center. Get in touch with my soul and my spirit, like really, and let go of of all of that false bravado, all of that um, image that I felt was black and hip hop or whatever, and then sort of build him back up. And and find the man who would the beginnings of the man who would end up being Russell, you know, when you get into your your um, your emotional center, your emotional core, not being afraid to be sensitive, you know, I mean, again, I, I just have being introduced to friends who are homosexual gays and, you know, lesbians and whatnot, never being exposed to that in Oakland and then becoming friends with people, you know, at first you're like, hey, you know, you resistant. And then again, you'd have an opportunity to get to know people for who they really are. And you love them just the same. You know, that wouldn't have happened anywhere else. And that also wouldn't have happened in a different discipline either, you know, in my opinion. So do you have, I'm curious to know if for our students who are at CFA now being sort of tasked with doing the same thing to find themselves, do you have advice to share with them about how, what what was successful for you in doing that? I think, uh, for me, the, the I had the good fortune of not having any previous acting experience, you know, quite honestly, not having any specific acting experience like, you know, Stanislavski or anything like that. It was just get up and do it instincts. And so I was open. Uh, I was, a you know, an open book. I was a blank page, you know, all of that. And I was able to just receive whatever they were giving. It was imparted to me. I think around the middle of my sophomore year, um, Bob Young, Robert Young, said, just take what we're giving and you can discard it later. And it was like, that was like deep. That was profound. And so my advice would be, don't resist. You know, take what, take the lesson. Just take every aspect of the lesson that they're giving you. And then, you know, use what you want, use what you need and discard the rest or put it in your pocket, put it in your closet and save it for later, then go back and get it. I think oftentimes, you know, because we, especially, you know, young, you think, you know, but you don't, you know what I mean? Sure, like yeah. in 18 to 22, <laughs> you don't know nothing. Yep. And it, you know, and it doesn't, it's like, you don't realize it until long after you've got out of school where you. I didn't take full advantage of the lesson of the opportunity that I had because I was too busy fighting. Sure. And I, I just didn't do that because I didn't know enough. 
to fight. Sure. I said, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. And that's where I benefited. So um, it sounds like you had a great experience here around sort of the, the art of the performance. And I'm wondering, my, my outsider impression is that being a, an actor, you, there's some education that has to happen around the business side of the industry as well. Does that, does that, the, are those lessons you learned here or once you moved to New York? Well, and well, well, then, you know, you learned it in the cold streets. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, they, there was no business, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, class, you know, in that, okay. because th- the truth is, I don't really think they knew at the time, mm-hmm. you know, th- th- that wasn't broadcast news, really, you know, just sort of the business. And when you're when you're telling, you know, actors, they're going to go to New York and Los Angeles. And all all you're 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 equipping, you're imparting them is just how to be an artist that business has. To, it, it comes later. OK. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I think, but actually, I mean, it's a different time now, yeah. but I actually appreciated that. Okay. You, you know, could just I'm, focus on the craft. You just focus. Yeah. You know, I I never went, I didn't go to New York one time while I was here. I didn't try to take, you know, pursue a movie and let me go, you know, have to leave early and all that kind of stuff like that. I just was a student for four years yeah. and took everything in as I possibly could. And when I got out, it was time to get dirty. Now, I've got some of my information from Wikipedia, so I might be wrong, but you mentioned New York. Does that happen right after BU, or do you also attend at Oxford, right? Yeah, that was during uh, my junior year. Oh, okay. Yeah, during my junior year for, like, semester, you just, you know, you go, yeah, like half a semester, you just go over summer into, like, the beginning part of the semester. You go over there and studying classes and learning the different dynamics for, you know, how the Brits, how the English approach theater, how they approach character versus Americans. I, I think that from my from what I saw at the time and what I experienced, you know, the English were very heady, you know, generally. Whereas we're very visceral and emotional. You know, and when you look at historically when you look at the, the characters, uh the American characters versus the British characters or what have you, or those actors, we come with all this bravado and they sit back and you know, it's think about this ponder things so it's just like duh. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, it was great to get the lesson mm-hmm. to to be, a, to, you know, it, to be a, th- a feeling, to be a thinking actor is to be a feeling actor and vice versa. You have to use both. And that's where, you know, you start to build upon the craft of acting, not the instinct of acting. Okay. So you finish up your time at BU and then like – Every other student who graduates from this campus and, and our other campuses, you've got some decisions to make. How did you decide to go to New York? You know, that was the that was the yellow brick road that was out in front of me. I was fortunate enough to win the uh, Esther B. Khan Award. And so, you know, you get you're endowed with, you know, about tens of thousands of dollars, you know, which allowed me to like last like six months in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and so that's what you want to do because I wanted to do theater. They, uh, when, when I graduated, when I, my senior year in the fall, 95, August Wilson was doing seven guitars here. And I'm, I ran into, um, Ruben Santiago Hudson, Keith David and Viola Davis at the time. And I had a conversation with Ruben and he was asking me what I was going to do. And I said, I'm going to go to LA and star. He said, brother, you need to go to New York and become an actor. First, he said, before you go to L.A., he said, you're going to want to get in some theater, get in some plays, get in some workshops, become an actor first. He said, you next you never know. You might get in one of these August plays. Lo and behold, two years later, I can't, I'm coming back to, you know, to Boston, you know, representing in, in, in the August play Jitney. So yeah. he was right. And I'm grateful for that. So it sounds like you had some mentors in your life. My impression of the performing arts industry is that building a network is also a crucial piece of that. And I'm curious to know, you know, once you got to New York, is it, is it all about networking and the hustle? Are you able to get work immediately or is it, has it was it a challenge for you? You know, in looking back, I, I got work pretty, pretty swiftly, pretty, pretty immediate, you know, two years, within two years, I was a working actor but in that time. But my approach, once I got to New York, I had only one job where I waited tables and that was, I lasted a month and I got fired. After that, I decided that every job I would have after that would be a job of performance, whatever it was, I'd be a, I'd be a performer. So I 
dressed up like Santa Claus, and, you know, dressed up like uh, uh, what is it, pilgrims at Thanksgiving, you know, <laughs> you know black pilgrims, right? You know, <laughs> uh, teddy bears for you know corporate th- events, you know, those you, you do, doing those what do they call those industrials? Yeah, you know. But you're making a living. But I was making a living, and then. I, I would do uh, – what are those phone – when you do like phone message, you know, uh, telemarketing, mm-hmm. ask surveys. So what I did was, though, I I took – I said I looked at the region of the country that I was calling, and I would change my voice and pitch and everything to reflect whatever region. And that was, you know, me working on dialect work. And I could – you know, my uh, – I, I closed. I did a whole bunch of surveys based because I was able to sort of change my voice and diction and everything like that. But the one that always killed was the British RP. It was just like it just relaxed people. Oh, so this is this is a voice I can trust. It sounds, it was, <laughs> and you picked that up when you were in England. Yeah, yeah. and you know everywhere else. You know, I, right. I can't say England because then my voice and speech teacher would be like, "Come on now." Right. But uh, yeah. So how long are you in New York, and and what are some of the the things that you did uh, that really stand out for you as being things that you were proud of of your work as a as a young alum? Well, I was in I was technically in New York for like six or seven years, but you know, just willing to having the willingness to take any project. It, because, and again, that's what I wanted to leave myself open for. That's why I didn't I, st- I didn't wait tables. I didn't become a bartender. You know, I worked at night because I wanted to be flexible. And so when somebody said, hey, Russell, we're doing a reading of this play, this screenplay. Yes, I'm there. Uh, we're going to do a workshop. Yes, I'm there. I did everything that performance. I was always available. Whether the play was good or not, it didn't matter. I had to constantly be in pursuit and exercising, you know, my instrument constantly in order to, you know, my thing to get better. Because I had to justify my presence in New York, you know, you have to be working on something, you know, so, yeah. yeah. So you got some advice that you needed to go to New York to be, to learn to be an actor. Mm-hmm. And, and, but then at some point you make a decision to move to Los Angeles. Tell us about that decision process. Well, once I, I was attached to August Wilson's Jitney, we did a two year tour of the country, ended up in Los Angeles in the uh, uh, December of 99 and opened and ran through uh, 2000. I auditioned for a television series, got the series. They offered it to me, but they said, you have to quit the play. I said, I'm not going to quit the play. They increased the money. They said, this is money. Here you go. I said, I can't quit the play. Like, this is what I do. Like, everybody's way. If I don't take this play into New York, I didn't do it. So fortunately, and me sticking to my guns, they were able to shoot me out in four days. I was able to do the play in New York, be part of it for three months, left to play, then came back to Los Angeles to do the series. And the rest is art history. So was there a specific decision that you made? You mentioned that you during BU you were like, I'm going to be a theater actor. Is there a specific decision that you made to target film and TV roles instead of theater? Or is it, it just all kind of worked out that it, way? It, it's, just, it's worked out. Yeah. You're just looking for a job. Mm-hmm. You know, it, The opportunities presented themselves. But the conscious decision I did make every year is I did a play a year – for about 12 years. Uh, I averaged a play a year, and I'm very proud of that. The last play I did was 2010, but up until that point, I was doing a play a year, saying you know, to the contrary of my representatives who wanted me to stay in town to get a TV show or a movie or whatever, I said, no, I have to go to this regional theater or that regional theater to do a play because I am an actor. And that was also me wanting to keep the respect of my peers, my theatrical peers, you know, you you want to you want to hold yourself up to that standard, and the people that I came in with or I came up with or that I respected were all theatricals. They were all theater actors, and I wanted their respect. So I knew that I had to stay in theater so that when I came back, I wasn't a foreigner. So then, but then you go on to some some really well known TV shows: Grey's Anatomy, Law and Order, Grimm, Seven Seconds. Yes. Is there? <laughs> A big transition from being a theater actor to being a film and TV actor, and what 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 are the differences that you might be able to tell us about? I think the the difference is is the scope. Uh, as an actor, you have to modulate a performance when you're coming from the from the stage to the screen or film, and that takes that's a learning curve. Some people get it, and some people don't. I had wonderful mentorship 
And my mentor, he said to me, you don't have to give everything you have on every role. And so historically, because black actors didn't have opportunities, they wanted to show you, I got, I got it. I got fire and brims. I can do all the stuff. And he said, you just don't have to do that. He said, be patient with yourself and just take your time. And so I was able to do that. And you approach the role or you approach the work. I think what you have to do is just approach it, approach it honestly. The, the saying goes, there is no right, no wrong. There is only truth. So if you come to the moment with the idea of, I'm just going to tell the truth, then it works. But if you're lying to yourself or to the audience, then that's when they see smoke and yeah. mirrors. But so I'm curious, though, then offenses happens, and I, I might be jumping around mm-hmm. chronologically on you here, but you're working with Denzel Washington, Viola Davis. Do you have to give everything you have to that role? I mean, is it, it – <laughs> well, you know, I would but, assume that you're going to bring no, everything you No, no, you do, you but the thing is th- 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 it's not about giving everything you have. I already had it. Yep. The work had been done. Do you know what I mean? So I wasn't – I was respectful – I was honored to be there, but I wasn't intimidated. I had I had already shown what I had by being a part of the play. And even in that moment, I wasn't scared or intimidated. I was honored to be there, but I know I'm supposed to be here. Sure. And so you step into the room because here's the thing. I, I know from experience, and I know from talking to other actors, Denzel and Viola, they don't want you to sit in reverence of them. They want you to come in ready to go. Let's go. You can, you know, salute and whatever you want and bow and scrape and genuflect later on, but not when we're coming in the room to do the work. So I, I knew that. I mean, the idea of like, I have to come here to work. And so I was ready. And so that represented a great opportunity for me because, again, I had done the work leading up to that. All the theater I had done, you know, challenging myself, the television work challenging myself so when the time came they knock on your door they call you you're ready to go and they know that that's why they call sure well and now you know i i I don't speak for the entire university but i know that bu is excited for you for this latest role with the hate that you give um i'm curious you know uh, seven seconds a story about a young black man killed by the police the hate you give a story about a young black man killed by police. Mm-hmm. How how does somebody prepare to do roles that true to life and heavy? And how would you uh, – what kind of advice would you give to people who are also acting who would need to prepare for roles like those? For seven seconds, I just live my life. You know, the secret of life is in the living. So of it. And I continue – you know, as a as a as a as a black man in America, you're living your life. I'm paying attention to what's going on in the world and what's going on in my community, what's going on around me. And so, all you have to do is just live in the circumstances that are set before you, and just be honest. And that's it. Because if you know you're you know you're, it, it, life art imitates life. So if you're living it fully, all you have to do is be present in the moment now. Yeah. You know, and so all the way again, all the work that I've done, all the living that I have done leading up to that enabled me uh, to find that character and enabled me to invoke a real sense of truth with a sense of dignity and integrity as well. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Uh, th- this is a question that I, th- I think I'm sometimes uncomfortable asking, um, but. Success is such a personal thing. Um, you've got this great role in this movie coming out now. I know you're going to be in Creed too, which mm-hmm. I'm excited for. Um, do you feel like you're successful? Are you able to to, to enjoy that and, and feel that? You know, I, yes, I feel I've been successful. You know, where others fall down, I fall up. I've been exceedingly blessed and fortunate. I have my lovely wife here with me. We have two beautiful children. That's success for me. I'm 44 years old. Like, if you don't know who you are by now, then you will never know. So the blessing is, is that I'm attaining this level of success at 44 versus 34 or 24. I've taken the journey. I've lived the life. I've had disappointments. I've made mistakes. So I get what it is. You know, uh, Roscoe Lee Brown, wonderful, fabulous old actor, Back in 2004, 
we I was doing um, Intimate Apparel with Lynn Nottage and Viola Davis. And he said to me, we were at a party. He says to me, young man, he says, if I can look at you and tell you're a handsome man, you're beautiful, intelligent, and talented. He said, but one thing, never mistake your presence for the event. And at the time, I really didn't understand what he meant by that. But you live a little and you figure it out. It's not about me. It's just, it's about what I can, you know, what I can do for others through the work, quite honestly. Sure. Well, I, I'm glad to know that BU continues to be a part of your life. I know that you've been involved with our Black Alumni Leadership yes. Council. Thank you for doing that. And then I know tonight even you're going to meet with some students uh, and some of our alumni at a screening that you're doing mm -hmm. just for BU. And I'm, I'm guessing you'll take questions from the audience. I'm sure a lot of our students will just be asking you for, how do, how do I get into the business? How do I do this? And I'm sure you ask that question all the time. But I'll, I'll ask you again, what, what tips do you give to people who want to be working actors? Uh, work. And what I mean by that is, there is no magic formula. There is no magic pill to take to get in. You have to just continue to do it. I'm an I'm old school, so I, I don't. So therefore, I just believe that if you do the work, good things will come. If you're in pursuit of good things will come. I don't necessarily believe it's how much you Instagram and how many videos. I just don't believe that. I just believe it's about the work. So if you are on the stage somewhere, if you're filming something somewhere, if you're working on student films, if you're constantly working in pursuit of the work opportunities will find you. And also if you deal with a level, high level of, of respect and integrity, opportunities will find you. That's what I believe. But I, and I also believe that you really have to be about the craft. It, you, it can't be about celebrity. I hope that people stay in that mind frame of being about the work and not about being famous and not about making a whole bunch of money. It has to be about the work. We've lost some of that in my opinion, you know, because people get so many opportunities and there's so many things about content and this and that, that I think people don't really get an opportunity to really see that acting is a craft. Again, they look at it as a, an instinctual pursuit of just something. Oh, I can say these lines and say these words Aren't I great? And I'm beautiful, too. <laughs> right? But it really is about the pursuit of the craft. Yeah. Well, that's all good advice. Russell, thanks so much for being here. Uh, thank you for all that you do for BU. And we're, we're really excited for, for some big roles coming out for you and the, the success you've had. So thank you. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Thanks again to my new friend, Russell Hornsby. It was fantastic getting to know him. Uh, don't forget to see him now in The Hate You Give, and you'll also be able to catch him later this fall when he stars in Creed 2. Thanks again for listening to the Proud to Be You podcast. If you like what we're doing, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review Proud to Be You wherever you download your episodes. I'm Jeff Murphy, and no matter where your path takes you, be proud to be you. The Proud to Be You podcast is produced by Boston University Alumni Relations. This episode was recorded in partnership with the College of Communication and our friends over at WTBU. Our theme is from Jump and APM Music. To learn more about Proud to Be You, visit bu.edu slash alumni slash podcast.